There are virtually no Russian airplanes. Virtually no, that's comforting. Virtually none. That's comforting. How many are there? But I'll tell you something. Well, how many are there? Well, a lot fewer than there are American planes. But you get my point, George. Here's ringed it. around why are you so, Russia and China. But George, because why America are you so, want, Why are you so keen because America to take want, the Putin worldview? No, I'm, I'm keen that Russia should not be broken up into Balkan states. Welcome, guys. Let's get to catch up with George Galloway. We've got some amazing clips we want to show you here from the interview with Pierce Morgan. I think these are the best clips. You really don't want to watch anything else. He's going to talk about the Hamas uh, October 7 attack and a little bit about Israel. Then we're going to jump into the Ukraine situation. Obviously, George Galloway is going to come in correcting Pierce Morgan, giving him all the facts of the situation and basically uh, getting his facts straight. So let's jump right in and uh, you know react to this. Guys, make sure you guys subscribe to me. What the hell, man? Nobody's following me. Nobody's subscribing to me. Subscribe to me right now. Click the video like and watch the video to the end. I'm done with this. What Hamas, do you think what Hamas did that day was a terrorist attack? Uh, well, the parts that I'm talking about were undoubtedly a terrorist attack. Right. But if you see, attack I think see, look, I wasn't expecting you to say that. And the reason yeah. I think it's significant, George, is a lot of people are sat in that chair mm. on the Palestinian mm. side of this debate. And they have resolute, including Jeremy Corbyn, I might add, who have resolutely refused to condemn what Hamas did that day. And I find that very difficult to get past. Well, yeah, you know, I, I've often, I understand that. I've ended up with 20 minute debates, as I did with Corbyn about it, because uh, I don't see how any human being no, killing, can, can kill, not tell killing, that what it is. Killing innocent civilians, whether on London Bridge mm. or on the London Underground or at a music festival, mm. uh, are terrorist acts. Let me clarify, because I know what he's about to say, guys. I'll clarify, and, uh, and he's basically going to reiterate what I'm saying. What he's saying is, you're right, it's a terrorist attack when they attacked the festival and took hostages. This is a terrorist act to take the hostages, to kill civilians, hurt them, put them in the line of fire. That's a terrorist attack. But you have to understand that not the complete operation was a terrorist attack. M many of the actual reports I've been reading was the only terrorist attack that happened that day and was condemned and would be an international war crime was the hostage taking and the civilian, uh, uh, you know, unaliving besides that attacking military bases and uh, you know that are surrounding your actual border that's not a war crime and that's what hamas is claiming that they did they're claiming that we went to, to military bases most of our operations were to go into military bases we actually didn't know that the festival was going to continue that's what they're claiming they're claiming but they are also claiming that we did want to take hostages so they are actually conceding that they were going to do international war crimes but you have to understand the complete operation was an in, was an international war crime it was some subjects of the operation so i think that's what galloway is going to explain here let's continue because they are punishing innocent people for the crimes of guilty people mm. now i was underground as an agent of the anc in apartheid south africa i was working for nelson mandela's anc I gave my blood on the floor of the Guguletu police station in Cape Town. Was the ANC a terrorist organization? The answer to that is no, even though they had people who carried out terrorist attacks. You have to understand the whole picture and not just a tiny corner of a single snapshot. The ANC, like the Palestinians, are fighting against an apartheid state in the case of Palestine, the millions of Palestinians scattered around the world with no one speaking up for them. And so from when, time when, to when time... When people categorise what Hamas did on October 7th as resistance, mm. do you think that's an acceptable choice of word for what, that, what happened that day? If you are fighting against occupation forces, uh, undoubtedly it is. So if you cross the wire, break out of the wire, of the concentration camp. It was David Cameron, I remind you, who called it the largest open air prison camp in the world. If you break through and you start uh, taking a toll on your guards, the people who've kept you in this absolute immiseration, penury, with regular death being dealt to you, uh, then that's a legitimate act of resistance. It's not legitimate it's to attempt to attack kids and grandmothers uh, already and so we, no, that's what i mean uh, already but so, that's why i mean yeah. some people try to describe what Hamas so what's is. happening here is pierce morgan is conflating that the hostage taking with the rest of the terrorist attack uh, with the, the rest of the operation the military operation of october 7. 
Okay, we agree with you. We, he already said, okay, yes, you're right. Attacking civilians, taking hostages, this is against international uh, laws, and this is actually horrific, and is basically an amount to terrorism. But going against occupation forces that are occupation, occupying like the, your land, I was in South Africa, and I'm telling you, that's what we did. And this is, you cannot say that that's actually a war crime. Then Pierce Morgan comes back, conflates it back to the grandmas and babies and the beheadings, whatever he wants to start claiming here. But what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to tell you is why are you conflating the babies being attacked on October 7 with the military objectives being targeted on October 7? You can say the babies being attacked was a horrible thing, but attacking the military objectives against an occupying state was a military success for the operation. We could say that. We could say that that's not an illegal war crime. But Pierce Morgan, he has to actually concede that. So what he does is he brings back the grandma and the babies and the kids being attacked on that day. But George Galloway already conceded to him, yes, that's a war crime, but the military operations were successful in these matters when you act attack the occupying forces, when you attack settlers. These are actually uh, basically successful military operations. We cannot label these as terroristic actions. But look, Pierce Morgan is doing it wrong. He's conflating the babies and the grandmothers with the military objectives being targeted. But these are soldiers dying. They're not babies and mothers. When soldiers die, that's not an international war crime, especially in an occupy occupied contested zone like what's happening in Gaza right now. So let's continue. That day uh, as resistance. No, killing grandmas and kids is terrorism. It's not resistance. It's not resistance. Right. It's terrorism. That's my point. But killing uh, soldiers and security officers of the Israeli state is enshrined in international law. When you used the phrase earlier about Israel having the right to defend itself, yeah. It literally does not have the right. Wow. It's excluded. Every country has the right the, to defend itself. It's excluded in international law that any country has the wow. right to defend itself from territories that it illegally occupies. But, so the uh, occupied yeah, have that right. Hang on. As you've just said, so many acts burner. of terrorism were committed that day, mm. and every country has a fundamental right to defend its people from terrorism. You would agree with that? Uh, yes, from terrorism. Right. But the, so, uh, so Israel but the, does have a right to... Because the Hamas spokesman, I think, critically for this debate, the Hamas spokesman, within several weeks, on camera, said, we will keep trying to do this again and again. Well, I'm not a supporter of Hamas. I'm not saying you are. No, I'm just saying... I, I, but I'm uh, saying, in terms of Israel's right to defend yeah, itself, I, indeed, I would say a moral duty. Now, the scale of it we're going to come to, and a duty to its people, if the perpetrators say we're going to keep trying to do this, to defend itself. You yeah, would but, agree with that. But to defend yourself by killing and mutilating 150,000 people and climbing, save the children have just said, there are 21,000 missing children on top of the 15,000. No, we don't we have these figures. Know. These figures have not been confirmed. But, well, we you, can believe, you can believe save the children no, or not. I, I, agree. I, 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 I think they're a pretty reputable I, I organization. I believe... Up, Princess Anne is their I think it's it is widely accepted that up to about 40,000 people so far have died. We don't know how many of those are Hamas. Israel would have you believe it's 15,000. Well, I've seen a lot of pictures of people who are manifestly not Hamas. I agree. So have you. I agree. Uh, so... And I think the slaughter of the children has been horrific. Yeah, and, horrific. Uh, and inevitable. Yeah. Inevitable. It is I mean, inevitable. Not... If, you, think... if you yeah, defend yourself yeah. by raining down bombs yeah. on tents, yeah. it is inevitable that you are going to but Hamas... kill and mutilate children but and women who cannot possibly be Hamas. But Hamas would have known that Israel would respond in that way. Yes, but, Israel, but Israel would have known that if you keep 2.3 million people in a cage, yeah. they're going to try and break out. So there's all kinds of concomitants should have known right. in this story. They should have known when they occupied Palestinian land, drove hundreds of thousands of them out, never to return, that those people would have children and they would have children and enmity, bitterness and a desire for revenge would exist forever. And so it has. Now, the Gaza people maybe were unlucky. They were driven out only to Gaza, not to the neighboring countries. And they had a, a fence put around them. And by the way, this is something I think you should acknowledge. Mm. It suited Israel that Hamas were there. They begged Qatar 
to keep on feeding no, I agree with you. Hamas. I agree with you. Because they, let, wa- they didn't want Arafat, let my me, friend. Let me clear this. They wanted an Islamist To me, Net- enemy. Netanyahu liked the idea of the Palestinian governments being split yep. between Palestinian Authority and Hamas. It suited him that they were divided, mm-hmm. that there wasn't a unity governing the Palestinian people. That is why he helped authorize these billions being sent through to Hamas. And Hamas then, in my opinion, abused that money and used it to build the tunnels where they went down, but they didn't let the civilians go down to arm themselves to the teeth and plan attacks, right? So I don't remotely excuse Netanyahu for this. I actually think going out of this... goes much lot further back, Piers. I was there, saw it with my own eyes. Well, you're gonna, the you're, birth you're, of Hamas. Right, but Befo- I mean, they were given existed. power in 2005, yeah, but, it, but it's existed for 38 years. Right. But there is was, was governmental involved. power in 2005. Sure, but I've been involved for 50 years. Hmm. So I can tell you that I saw with my own eyes the deliberate uh, bringing into being of an Islamist resistance set of organizations to stymie Yasser Arafat. Mm. They didn't want Arafat. They didn't want the likes of my friend, the next uh, legitimate president, the Nelson Mandela of Palestine, Marwan Barghouti. Many of his family members have been on your show. Marwan Barghouti, they don't want, they want to keep him in a dungeon because he represents an ideal uh, that unites uh, people of all religions and none you, uh, has an ability to attract people around the world to the nobility of his cause. So kill and jail all the people like that. Make a bogeyman of an Islamist enemy. Make sure he continues to be funded by uh, Arab regimes that you are able to order around. And that's what happened. Guys, let's get into the Ukraine part now and let's see what uh, Pierce Morgan wants to say about this. Oops. 90 something percent of the people in the 90s to become an independent, democratic, sovereign country Mm -hmm. in Europe. Mm -hmm. And they were then persuaded by the international community to give up their nuclear deterrent. Defense. Well, it wasn't theirs. It was the Soviet. Okay, but they were they were persuaded to give up their weapons. Yeah, but it wasn't and, theirs. And part of the Russia de- was the inheritor okay, state. But, but the deal, the deal was that if they did that, mm. then they would be guaranteed their independence. Mm. What could be more independent than, in Ukraine's case, for example, wanting to be, of their own volition, a member of NATO? But we had a. Which gov- is a defensive alignment. In 2014, there was a government that did not want to do those things. Mm. And it was overthrown in a coup d'etat. The parliament on fire, the president fleeing for his life. And the first act of the terrorized deputies, literally with a gun at their head, was to outlaw the Russian language. Now, one third of the Ukrainian people are Russian speaking people, including Zelensky, uh, the greatest showman on earth. Uh, I could call him something else, but let's. What else would you call him? uh, I'd call him a thief, I'd call him a fraud. I'd say that he fooled the Ukrainian people, that he was going to make peace uh, with the Russian... I'd call him an absolute hero. And I would say back at you, George, that for such a smart guy, and you are a smart guy, I've met a lot of politicians, you're right up there in terms of your intellect. It seems to me that you're more comfortable just going along with the Putin worldview Mm. than you are going along with the view of someone that Putin has barbarically, illegally invaded. I mean, you and I agreed about the illegal Mm -hmm. invasion of Iraq. Mm -hmm. We thought it was completely wrong, Mm -hmm. right, that America and the UK and the other allied forces invaded Iraq as retribution for something they had nothing to do with. Um, And it turned out to be a total disaster that spawned... And we both got sacked. And we both got sacked, right? And we agreed about that, which is why I'm really struck by the fact that we agree, we disagree so vehemently mm. about what seems to me a very similar situation. No, because you've got to know the history, and you should know it. I do know the history. Uh, the, Russia has been invaded twice by Napoleon and then by Hitler, using the runway of Ukraine. Mm. The idea that Russia is going to allow uh, American missiles masquerading as NATO missiles on the soil of the place where Russia was twice invaded uh, in the last couple of years. Do you know how much of Russia... Russia is one of the the biggest... It is the biggest country country in the world, world. right? Do you know how much percentage-wise 
is bordered by NATO countries, including Finland, who's just come into it. Yeah, if you put a nuclear... Do you know how many? Uh, yeah, uh, if you put a nuclear... Hang on, hang on. Well, if, well, that's a different I'm question. Gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, that's a different question. I'm, I'm, I'm what gonna... percentage is, is actually bordered by NATO countries? Well, you've got the including Baltic Finland. states, and if you had had hang on, Ukraine... What, do, do you know the answer? No. Right, have a guess. 10, 15? 10%. Yeah. 10 percent, a yeah. tiny percentage what, what of Russia's mean? border. But what what does it that means mean? is a NATO, missile takes two. NATO is not a, a missile takes less than two minutes. NATO is a defensive organization. Tell that it is, to the birds. Well, Tell that to the people of Libya. Why Tell do you that think? Why do you think so many? Why do you think so many of the former countries in the Soviet Union are racing to want to be part of it because they are fearful not of NATO attacking them uh -huh. but of Russia attacking no, them. No, they, they, look, like he course, did in Grozny, look, like he did in Georgia, like he did in Crimea, like he's now done in Ukraine. Why do you keep trusting is this it, guy? Is it important to stick to the facts? The facts are these: Russia was promised, Gorbachev was promised by the United States, by James Baker, mm -hmm. the Secretary of State, to George Bush one that if the Red Army left eastern Germany, NATO would not expand one inch to the east of Germany. They have expanded thousands of kilometers to the east of Germany, and they now have nuclear missiles within two minutes of hitting St. Petersburg. You're not answering my question. Why have these, why have these former countries, part of the old Russian empire, mm. why have they been so keen to join an alliance which is a defensive alliance. It's not because they want to be aggressive you to know, Russia. It isn't a, it's because a they want to be. BS! This is BS because we all know that Bill Clinton refused Putin to join the NATO alliance, which was literally created to go anti Soviet Union. So if the Soviet Union is asking you to join the NATO alliance, that means they want to. They're basically giving up the complete uh, operation of the Soviet Union. They're. He did ask to join NATO, and this is crazy that they're actually a defensive, uh, they're a defensive posture against the nation that actually asked them to join them. What does that mean, Kanye West? It doesn't matter. Bill Clinton immediately refused him, like he forced him to change his mind. Yeah, he exactly. He demanded instant membership, but Bill Clinton instantly disregarded that request. He he actually was surprised. Putin was surprised because. That was basically the Soviet Union conceding all its powers and even the necessity of the NATO alliance. But still, I mean, the NATO alliance wouldn't have existed or wouldn't have a reason to exist if Putin really accepted this is the real answer here. So this is a, another lie that Pierce Morgan is going to go ahead and push forward that uh, the NATO alliance is a defensive alliance. Well, Soviet Union tried to join it, and it's literally a defensive alliance against the Soviet Union. So why did you stop the Soviet Union from joining you to stop and, and, and so you can have over control over the Soviet Union? It's clear because you don't want control over it. You actually want to topple it down. You want an offense. This is an offensive alliance, not defensive. Defended why they, when Russia almost if, inevitably attacks them. If they're defensive, why did they bombard uh, Belgrade for 90 days. If they're defensive, why are there ships sailing in the South China Sea as far away from the North Atlantic as it's possible for a NATO warship to be? Why are why? there Russian airplanes flying over Europe? Actually, there are virtually no Russian airplanes. Virtually no, that's comforting. Over. Virtually none. That's comforting. How many are there? But I'll tell you something. Well, how many are there? Well, a lot fewer than there are American but you get planes my point, George. Is ringed it? around why are you so, Russia and China. But George, because why, America are you so, why are you so keen because America to take want, the Putin worldview? No, I'm, I'm keen that Russia should not be broken up into Balkan states. To, who's who's going to do that? That's the avowed intention but no, of, no one's attacking of the Rand Ru report no one's attacking of the think Russia. tanks. Well, you say they're not attacking Russia. They're not. Crimea was yesterday uh, shelled by an Atakams missile programmed by the What are you going to do, Crimea Pierce? Crimea belongs to Ukraine. It doesn't belong it does. to Ukraine. You talked it's about people stolen. voting. It was you, stolen you in 2014. So he voting. can do the attacks well, on Crimea. Do, do, does voting mean anything or not? Well, the, you think the, the vote after they stole it matters? You think it has the any, referendum, any... The referendum that was held in Crimea as any fool would have known the result would be, was at least 90% for rejoining Russia. Rejoining being the operative word. The Crimea was 
an autonomous part of Ukraine during the Soviet uh, era. The people of Crimea, like the people of eastern Ukraine now, it wouldn't have been if there hadn't been a war, if there hadn't been an invasion, if there hadn't been a coup. Most people were content to live in an independent Ukraine, whether they were Russian people or Ukrainian mm. people. And it's an important dichotomy that a third of them are Russian. They would have been happy to live under a democratic uh, government in Kiev, but that's not what we have. First of all, his term has run out, but secondly, the overthrow of the legitimate government in 2014 led to a war of attrition against the people in eastern Ukraine, which turned the people more and more to the point of view that, as Russian-speaking people, they're better off with Russia. We should have implemented uh, the accords that France and Germany uh, guaranteed and the Security Council subsequently adopted that would have guaranteed Ukrainian neutrality. There's nothing unusual about that. If, if Mexico or Canada uh, decided to join a Chinese-Russian military bloc, America would never accept it. Neither will Russia accept it. Yeah, Ukraine is now part Ukraine. of Ukraine. Ukraine is part of Europe. It's not well, part of Russia. Russia. Part it's not of owned Europe. by Russia anymore. Moscow. Yeah, but, is Vladimir Putin. Yeah, but Mexico is not part of Russia, uh, US either. What are you talking about? Mexico is part of South of, uh, uh, America. What a dumb answer. Anyways, guys, I'm done with the Pierce Morgan reaction here. Interested in your opinions. Do you think Pierce Morgan is actually right here? I, to me, it, all his arguments were actually really bad. Uh, well. Well, Ukraine is part of uh, it is not part of Russia. It's part of Europe. Okay, so what? Mexico is not part of America, is it? It's part of South America, right? Do we remember that? Oh, okay, good. At least we remembered that. Anyways, guys, interested in your opinions? Um, do you think actually Piers Morgan had real arguments? To me, I did not see a single good argument from Piers Morgan. He failed on the Israel issue. He failed on the Ukraine issue. He tried to say that Ukraine, uh, well, the NATO is a self-defense of the alliance uh, against Russia. Basically, it's against Russia. Yeah, so why would Putin allow uh, NATO nations to be surrounding him? Exactly, if it's a self-defense alliance and that can posture offensively against the nations, why would you allow them around your uh, territory? And that's what George Galloway said. Is like, well, what about uh, in Mexico? Let's say we, uh, the Chinese alliance shows up. And, and, and Pierce Morgan really didn't have an, uh, an answer to that. Because America would be very mad. It wouldn't allow South Af America to join any Chinese-Russian alliance. America actually was very upset about the uh, military exercises in South America that were happening last year. Anyways, guys, interested in your opinions? Do you think he was right on this? Uh, leave a comment down below.